In this video I'm just going to show you a comparison between the various filter design techniques. Um, so the ones that I'm going to focus on are Chebyshev, Elliptical and Butterworth. Now this video is a follow-on from an earlier video that I did in which I showed how to use the Butterworth filter design function to filter out noise from a signal. <coughs> and I, I'm using the same script as I used for that um, video so that's why I'm starting off at line number 104 and the script is available from this uh, website here but just uh, to remind you um, how the Butterworth filter design function works um, it's called Butter and it takes in um, three parameters the first parameter specifies the filter order the second parameter specifies the cutoff frequency and the third parameter specifies whether it's a low pass filter a high pass filter a band pass filter or a stop band filter. So one of those four different filter types can be designed using this function. And each of the filter design functions will return a set of B and A coefficients. Um, so I've named my B and A coefficients appropriately. B butter, A butter in this case, and B chebby, A chebby in this case. And down below here, this is uh, an implementation of the Chebby Chef uh, filter design function. And it's got similar parameters to Butterworth, except it's got one additional one. But the first parameter specifies the filter order, the second parameter specifies what's known as the passband ripple. And I'll show you a few plots to explain what that passband ripple is. And the last parameter here is the cutoff frequency, which is the same as above for the butter. And I'm also specifying low pass. Then down here, I'm creating a, or I'm designing a filter using the elliptical filter design function. Uh, its order is 4. Its passband ripple is also 0 0.5, the same as Chebyshev. But it's got an additional parameter that's referred to as the stop band attenuation. And I'm using the same cutoff frequency in this case. So all three filters are basically trying to achieve the same thing. Uh, and they all return a set of B and A coefficients. Um, now, after getting the B and A coefficients from the filter design functions, I am then using the FreakZ function in MATLAB, which will determine the frequency response of the filter given a set of B and A coefficients. So I'm storing those results in HButter, HChebby, and HLip. Now, the frequency response tells you how the system will behave in both magnitude and phase. Um, and down below here, I am plotting. Uh, the magnitude response only, so I'm not looking at the phase response. Um, so in each case I am plotting uh, the magnitudes of each of the filters. Okay, So I'm just plotting them in the different colours, so red for the Chebyshev and green for the elliptical. And I'm using a normalised frequency axis um, in each case just so we can compare them easily. And this last part is just uh, labeling the axis and applying a legend. And at the very bottom here in a new figure I am plotting the magnitude response in dB uh, while above here I'm plotting it on a linear scale. So let's just um, execute those commands and generate the plots. Okay, so I want to start by taking a look at the linear scale uh, magnitude response. And we can see that um, the Butterworth is plotted in blue, the Chebyshev in red, and the elliptical in green. And we can see that we will, I specified a frequency response of, or sorry, I specified a cutoff frequency of 0 0.2. And we can see that each of them has. Um, uh, basically designed a low pass filter in which the low the cutoff frequency is 2 so frequencies below 0 0.2 aren't um, attenuated too much whereas frequencies above 0 0.2 are uh, attenuated by a significant amount. Um, the thing that's obvious in this view is that there is a passband ripple okay and I'm zooming in now on the passband region between 0 and 0 0.2 on the normalized frequency scale. And we can see that the ripple is, um, well, it looks like it's a value of, let's see, 50, 55 or thereabouts. So, there are, sorry, 0 0.55. Um, that's how much it's been reduced by. Um, now, that, that well, in the specification, or when we were designing the filters, we specified a passband ripple of 
0 0.5 dB. So let's move into the MATLAB command window now to see if that corresponds to what we're seeing here in the linear domain. So we know that um, 20 by log 10 of some value is equal to uh, minus 0 0.5 dB. So what we're looking for really is this value here and we can obtain that by getting the 10 to the power of um, minus 0 0.5 um, divided by 20. So that gives a value of 0 0.944. So what we want to see is, do, in the linear domain, are we getting 5 dB of ripple? So, the, uh, or at most 5 dB of ripple. So if we just zoom in here, we can see that these values correspond to minus uh, 441. Uh, and that indicates the uh, amount of ripple that we uh, are allowed to tolerate as specified in the filter design function. Um, <coughs> now, the, the next thing I'd like to highlight is that the roll-off rates for each of the filter design functions is different. Um, so the Butterworth filter design, um, it doesn't have any ripple in the passband. It's referred to as being maximally flat. So again, zooming in here, you can see that the response is flat. And that might be useful for certain applications. And it really depends on what you're trying to filter. Um, now, the cost of having that maximally flat uh, passband and indeed stop band, if we zoom in here we can see that it's it's a flat stop band as well, um, but there is a cost and the cost is that the roll-off rate for a Butterworth filter is slower than both the Chebyshev and elliptical design uh, techniques. Now, we can see that the elliptical design technique has a, a sharper roll-off again than the uh, Chebyshev. And it's obtained that additional um, sharpness by allowing for ripple in the passband. Uh, now, we can see that there is ripple there in the passband, okay? And it's, uh, the amount of ripple is 0 0.01, which corresponds to uh, 40 dB attenuation, okay? Now, just to verify those values, let's take a look at the uh, dB scale. And in the dB scale, it's easier to see um, whether the, the filters were designed as expected. So let's look at the passband frequencies first of all. We'll just zoom in. And what I expect is to see is there's no more than zero, minus 0 0.5 dB of ripple. And we can see there that there is no more than 0 0.5 dB of ripple for either Butterworth or Chebyshev. And that the Butterworth, or sorry, for either Chebyshev or elliptical, and the Butterworth is still flat, which is what you expect. And if we look at the stop band attenuation, um, we can see that there is minus 40 dB of attenuation being applied in the case of the elliptical filter design function. Okay, um, so those plots really highlight the differences between the different filter design functions and um, the key differences are whether you have ripple in the passband, ripple in the stop band and then the roll-off rate. So you get a, a faster roll-off rate for the same order filter if you use elliptical. Um, but you will have ripple in both the passband and the stop band. Now whether ripple is a big deal or not depends on the application. So you really just need to be aware of this and then depending on the application you need to make a judgment call as to whether you should allow ripple in the passband or the stop band. Um, the Butterworth filter is what's referred to as maximally flat. There is no ripple in either the passband or the stop band. While the Chebyshev, um, well there is an alternative Chebyshev implementation which also has ripple in the passband, but this Chebyshev, Chebby1 function has ripple in the passband but none in the stop band. And there are the three filter design techniques that are used quite a lot. Okay, thanks for your attention.